Our banana peels, nutshells, and other leftover foods can actually power the device you're watching this on. It's called biomass energy, and it's not only leftovers you can use. Wood, plants, or even animal feces can be a source of electricity or heat as well. We're surrounded by biomass, and as such, by opportunities. Unlike coal, this source of power can be regrown. Companies and governments around the world are ramping up investments. But at the moment, only around 4% of agricultural space is used for biomass energy crops. So, how big is the potential of biomass energy really? Let's start with how our trash becomes treasure. One of the ways organic matter is turned into energy, suitable waste can be anything from leftover food and manure to crop waste. It's collected from farms, restaurants or homes and then put into a processing plant to clean it from other materials like plastic. The next stop, the bioreactor. It's where bacteria eat up the waste in a so-called digester, which is sealed off from oxygen. This process is called anaerobic digestion. At temperatures of around 55 degrees Celsius, the organic waste is fermented over several weeks. In that time, biogas is produced. The gas contains high quantities of methane. It's a powerful source for generating electricity and heat once it's been fed into the gas grid. It can also be used to power natural gas vehicles. The leftover biomass can be used as compost for farming, for example, making the whole process circular. Biogas plants of this type exist all over the world. In Europe, there are around 20,000. There are estimates that biomethane could cover up to 40% of the EU's gas demand by the middle of this century. There are about 2,200 biogas plants in the US and about the same number in Thailand, Malaysia and Indonesia combined. Biogas plants produce only a quarter of the CO2 emissions that coal plants emit. Biomass energy has one large advantage over solar and wind in that it's on demand. So you don't care if the wind's blowing and the sun's shining. Steve Kelly has spent years studying biomass energy. All sounds good so far, but there's a catch. Biomethane can leak from these facilities. This gas's ability to warm the planet is much greater than that of CO2. And biogas facilities are only sustainable as long as waste is used. If crops are grown for the purpose, it's not viable. Biogas facilities are one way of generating energy from biomass. But what else can we use biomass for? Fuel. To run cars, trucks or even planes. Last year, for the first time, a flight avoided 20 metric tons of CO2 emissions because for the route from Paris to Montreal, the jet fuel was mixed with used cooking oil. One biofuel is bioethanol. Plants such as corn or sugarcane are fermented and distilled to produce it. Bioethanol can replace 10 to 20% of the gasoline used to power a vehicle. Then there's biodiesel. It's made by combining animal fats or vegetable oils like rapeseed or soy with alcohol. As with the ethanol, the produced biodiesel is added to normal diesel fuel. Biofuels are used at gas stations worldwide. But according to the International Energy Agency, they only account for 3% of transport fuel demand. The problem with biofuels, the crops for them need to be grown, and that takes away space for food crops, or even depletes forests or biodiversity, as is happening with palm oil trees in Indonesia, sugarcane in Brazil, and rapeseed in Germany. A study carried out in Germany found that using biofuels can help save 9.2 million tons of the country's annual CO2 emissions. But 16.4 million tons could be sequestered if natural vegetation was allowed to grow on crop fields instead. One possibility is replacing crops with algae, which can be grown in space-saving containers. It's a promising field which isn't quite economically viable yet. For more on that, watch our video on algae's superpowers. 
The simplest form of biomass energy is our most ancient way of producing it. Just burning stuff, like wood, leaves or waste. Though it's slowly decreasing, it still makes up 6.7% of energy consumption worldwide, especially among low-income communities with little access to other energy sources. But it is the least efficient way of using biomass. And the particulate matter that is released is bad for people's health. Nevertheless, burning stuff is also part of the carbon neutrality strategies of governments around the world. And by stuff, we mean good old trees. And that happens in the form of wood pellets. In the past decade, the demand for them as an energy source has steadily risen. With a market share of 62%, the US is the world's biggest exporter of such pellets. They're usually made from wood residues like sawdust or wood chips. Usually. Because here's the thing. Think tanks and NGOs have gathered evidence that shows that natural forests and habitats in Eastern Europe and North America are being destroyed by the rising demand for wood pellets through illegal logging. The main customer for them is the United Kingdom, but South Korea, Japan and the European Union are also takers. Some wood pellets are used in households for heating with modern stoves. But the bulk of them go to larger power plants, some of which use wood pellets to co-fire with coal, meaning both materials are burned together to rely less on fossil fuels. US, EU and UK policymakers have classified woody biomass as renewable, and therefore governments are subsidizing the production and burning of wood pellets. In 2021, the biggest power plant in the UK received around 1 billion euros in such subsidies, according to an energy think tank. Many countries are not obliged to count the emissions from wood-fired power plants, mainly because trees can regrow. Producers are required to reforest areas so that the CO2 that is released while burning pellets is reabsorbed. Now, in the United States, uh, depending on what state you're in, you plant two to four trees. For every one you cut down, you plant two to four new ones. But they're this big. They're a little tiny pine tree. Researchers like Kelly suggest that the immediate impact of substituting wood for coal is an increase in atmospheric CO2. A study found that depending on the type of forest, it could take 44 to 104 years until newly planted trees absorb the same amount of carbon sucked up by the ones that were cut down. Over a hundred year period, hands down, trees, uh, pine anyway, pine, you know, any of these ag crops um, are a good source of energy over a hundred years over 25 years, over 40 years. Frankly, they probably aren't. Especially when forests play another crucial role. Forests capture about one third of all anthropogenic carbon emissions. Um, so they are critical to staving off uh, global warming. Ellie Pepper is campaigning for the protection of forests. And older trees store more carbon. So there are certain forests that are even more critical to combating climate change than others. Unfortunately, these are some of the forests being plowed down for biomass energy. A study by the Institute of Physics suggests that replanted forests with fast-growing tree species absorb less CO2 than natural forests. We will not reach carbon neutrality by burning wood in big power plants like this one in the UK. Countries are spending money they should be spending on true renewables like wind and solar on this energy source uh, that's not going to get us where we need to be as a planet. Fast growing plants are seen as another option because the carbon emitted could be absorbed again much more quickly than with trees. Can we grow industrial hemp on old land that used to be tobacco or cotton and produce a uh, hemp-based pellet that you burn in, in Europe? Sure. Can you make biomass uh, sustainable and a have it give, make sure it has a positive carbon impact? The answer is yes. But then you have to get into the details of what kind of biomass what kind of land? 
The 4% of agricultural land that we are currently using for energy plants worldwide is not enough. But most space is needed for food crops. Most forms of biomass pretend to be better than they are. Burning wood to replace coal is not a solution, because even if the wood comes from sustainable forestry or is wood waste, it still produces emissions. Wood waste can, however, be digested by bacteria at a biogas facility. And organic products like that banana peel powering your phone can help manage waste cycles. But today, biomass energy covers only a small part of our worldwide demand. It can work in combination with other renewables, but it's not scalable to be our main energy source in the future. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel here, where videos like this every Friday.